What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and welcome back to part two of WWE Off The Script, episode number 13. It is Saturday morning. This is your absolute best place for WWE news and rumors right here on YouTube. Dot com. Now, in part one, I talked about Daniel Bryan's neck surgery. If you're a fan of Daniel Bryan, if you're concerned, if you're wondering what his condition is following the surgery that took place on Thursday, I talked about that in part one. Link is down below in the description if you guys missed yesterday's video. All right, but in part two, I got more Daniel Bryan news. It's going to be a Daniel Bryan weekend. Now, part two, the top story this week, Daniel Bryan actually admits CM Punk Quitting the WWE helped his push to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Daniel Bryan has discussed CM Punk's quitting retirement or timeout, whichever you want to call it, um, from the WWE in a recent podcast interview with Chris Jericho saying he feels it is responsible for his push and eventual win of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 30. I could have told you this, Daniel Bryan, I'm glad opened up about this because really it is true. And I'll get into what I think about this and actually making this into a real storyline at the end of this report. Uh, Chris Jericho asked about, he was asked about how he came to be in favor with WWE bosses and rose to the top of the roster. Daniel Bryan said, and I quote, it wasn't necessarily that I felt a shift in the company. It was essentially after Punk quit, it was like, well, we've got John Cena, and then we've got nobody else. While Bryan has proved himself a formidable replacement for CM Punk, WWE fans are still very vocal in their pleas for Punk to return. The wrestler has still yet to comment on his sudden departure from the promotion, leaving the conversation to be taken over by all manners of rumors spreading across the internet. Him being strapped as Phil Brooks, his real name, on AMC's The Talking Dead last year, discussion shows suggested uh, his punk days are behind him, but his future being labeled to be determined on a leaked raw script hinted that the door may not be completely shut just yet. Now, um, I said last year, CM Punk was actually on, on The Talking Dead this year, um, during part two of this current season of The Walking Dead. But, I'm glad Daniel Bryan opened up about this, because this was going to be something that was not going to be avoided. We all knew this, if you got a brain, if you got any common sense, if you kind of have a knowledge, any kind of knowledge about the workings of the business from an outside standpoint, uh, none of us are in the business. We don't know how the business really works or what, you know, what goes on internally. But we see and we're wise enough to know what's going on, you know, being outside that circle. Now, Daniel Bryan, obviously, with CM Punk's departure, he was elevated simply because CM Punk left the company. If CM Punk stood in the WWE going into WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan would not be the WWE Champion right now. We would have had Triple H for CM Punk. We would have had Daniel Bryan versus the rumored Sheamus matchup that we had. Daniel Bryan would have been stuck on the mid-card without any real push uh, towards that finish line uh, with the Authority storyline. Now, CM Punk's name is being brought up a lot. Uh, his contract does end in July. He's got literally a month and a half left. Okay, I'm for CM Punk returning, but it's ultimately up to him. Okay, I know Vince, you know, Vince is Vince. I think Vince, before the contract is up, he's going to try and get CM Punk to resign and ultimately come back. This would be the perfect opportunity for CM Punk to come back. Now, with Daniel Bryan out, you know, some of my subscribers have discussed stripping the title off of, uh, taking the title off him. I, I don't think that's the best idea. Now, one of my subscribers actually came to me um, yesterday and told me that he had a similar surgery like Brian had on Thursday. Not the same surgery, but similar. And he was up and about and ready to go back to work in a month. Okay? Now, we all seen John Cena come back from surgery. His, his last injury, he should have been shelled for about eight months. He came back in three. Okay? I don't know whether that was WWE just putting on a front and just, you know, being exaggerated about the whole thing or just, you know, blowing the whole thing out of proportion. But... Daniel Bryan, I do see coming back in about a month, month and a half. There's no reason to take the belt off of him uh, if it's going to make him healthy. There's literally nobody, and I've stated this many times already in the past couple of days, there's nobody on the roster deserving of that belt. All right, If they do that, 
if they do take the belt off of him, that you could go one of two ways about this. Number one, you can hold a tournament for the WWE Championship. A King of the Ring, per se. Okay? Even name a King of the Ring. Have it span an entire Monday Night Raw episode. You got eight men vying for the WWE Championship. You have nothing else on that Monday Night Raw. You hype the shit out of that in the weeks to, in the weeks prior. And then when that day arrives, you got eight men. Eight of the best in the company. Bring them in, put them in a fucking tournament, and that entire show revolves around nothing else but those eight men. I don't want to see Divas. I don't want to see fucking Fandango. I don't want to see Santino. I don't want to see none of these guys. Eight men revolving about the, uh, around the biggest prize in the company. You do that. That's one option. Number two, you know, which I've seen talked about on forums, which I would be completely against. And this is the fucked up thing. I think WWE would actually do something like what I'm about to tell you. They take the World Heavyweight Championship off Daniel Bryan. They take the WWE Championship off Daniel Bryan. And they give both of those belts individually to Batista and Randy Orton. Can you imagine the fucking heat and the hatred that everyone would have for both men and the authority? Can you imagine that, that if the WWE actually went that route? I don't want to see it, but it's an idea. I would not put it past them. Number three, you have an interim champion. You name someone an interim champion, all right? You got Daniel Bryan, who is the undisputed champion. You're not going to take that title away from him. He's resting. He's recuperating. He'll be back in a couple of months. He is still the WWE champion, but the title needs to be defended. You have an interim champion, okay? You, and you, you name an interim champion, and then obviously when Daniel Bryan comes back, he uh, goes against the interim champion, and then finally they collide, they clash in one match, um, and it will be, uh, you know, champion versus champion. Uh, the winner of that is the undisputed champion. I don't want them to go that route because it's very typical. It's very typical of that. I don't want to see a clash of two champions, but it does bring back memories of HBK and um, Razor Ramon. Okay. Now, if they, if you go back, you see Razor Ramon. He's got the the real championship. Shawn Michaels was never beat before the ladder match at WrestleMania 10. Nobody ever pinned him. They stripped him of the belt. They gave it to Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon won a tournament. He beat the model Rick Martel on Monday Night Raw to capture that IC strap. Uh, Shawn Michaels comes in and names himself the IC champion again. Boom! They have a match at WrestleMania uh, WrestleMania 10, and it's one of the greatest matches of all time. They could go that route, you know, but it's it's legit typical. I don't want to see it. Or, you could do my idea, and you got CM Punk make a fucking shocking return and win the WWE Championship, and you could make what I just talked about here, Daniel Bryan discussed CM Punk leaving, made him the WWE Champion, CM Punk comes back, acknowledges this, takes the fucking interim championship, says, listen, the only reason why you're the real champion is because I left. Now I'm back, I'm the number one man now because you got yourself injured, and boom, you got yourself a storyline. Daniel Bryan's upset because Punk is back. He thinks Punk is uh, the fake champion. Punk is back because the only reason why Daniel Bryan is champion is because he left. And he's like, you know what? I'm coming back. I'm the fucking champion. You wouldn't be where you are today without me leaving. So I'm back, and now you're going to take a back seat to me. They could go that route. That makes perfect sense if CM Punk wants to come back. You want the summer of Punk? You want Punk back in the spotlight? You want Punk back in a major program? You want Punk at the top of the card? There you got it. There you got it, Mr. Phil Brooks. What are you going to do now? Listen, give me a pen and paper. I'll write the entire fucking rest of the year for Monday Night Raw and pay-per-views. Trust me. It is easy. I don't understand why WWE is having a difficult time giving us quality television. Now, if they do have a tournament, who do you have in the tournament? I'll talk about that in part three. I don't want to go too far in because I'll make this 30 minutes long with the way I talk. But that's what they're going to do. Daniel Bryan discussed it. He acknowledged it. I'm glad he did because it's the absolute truth. According to PW Insider, there continues to be concern within TNA about their future with Spike TV. There has also been no new deal signed, but the United Talent Agency is representing TNA in ongoing negotiations. Word is that UTA will be shopping TNA around to other networks instead of jumping right into a new agreement with Spike. If Spike TV does not pick up TNA, they are done. Okay? They don't got to worry about WWE. WWE just signed a new deal with NBC Universal. They are going to be on Sci Fi and USA. Uh, for the foreseeable future. SmackDown may even be live on Tuesday nights. We don't know yet. 
But according to Jim Ross with the New Deal, there's a potential for SmackDown to be live every Tuesday on Sci-Fi. So um, TNA, if they're, not, if they're not picked up by Spike, they're done. I already said it in part one, I think TNA is going to be done by the end of the year. If Spike TV does not pick them up due to whatever, lack of ratings, um, you know, poor demographic, whatever the fuck's going on with the network, they're done. I don't want to see TNA close down, but I haven't reported any good news about TNA in the last three weeks. Nothing. There are a lot of eyes on WWE's Adam Rose right now as his debut was seen as a failure. It said that a bigger story than people are letting on um, right now with Adam Rose, but we don't know why yet. I like Adam Rose. I like the character. I've said this many times already in the past. I think Adam Rose is going to be a good addition to WWE. They just got to treat him right. Not like Santino, not like a comedy act. Uh, Adam Rose needs to be, you know, that fun character that we can all enjoy and, and watch for entertainment. And then when he gets in the ring, boom, he does what he's got to do and leaves. But I like Adam Rose right now. He's going to be fighting Jack Swagger at Payback. So look forward to that uh, in a couple weeks on pay-per-view. There were reports last year. I got something in my mouth. I don't know what it is. I had a fucking burrito for lunch. Boom. There you go. I don't know what the fuck it was. Uh, there were reports last year that WWE wanted Shawn Michaels to come out of retirement for a match against his former student, Daniel Bryan. Michaels addressed these reports on his latest Ross Report podcast interview with Jim Ross. Excellent. You gotta listen to it. Michaels said he would attend a WWE show. People would always bring up something with Bryan, but those people were never the decision makers. Michaels wanted it clear that he, if he makes the decision on his in-ring future or that he makes the decision on his in-ring future, and said never in the almost five years that he's been retired that he's given anyone the impression that he was thinking about wrestling again. Sean said that beyond co uh, costing Daniel Bryan the WWE Championship at Hell in a Cell last October, nothing else was planned. Sean acknowledged the angle that appeared to be leading to a match uh, between the two, um, you know, when they uh, had their, uh, their little angle going on at Hell in a the Cell, then that, then that bled into the next night where I believe he put him in the yes lock. Sean then came up with the idea of going back out on Raw and letting Brian, like I said, put him in the S-lock. But other than that, there was no other discussions of a match. Would I like to see it eventually? Of course. You know, same thing with Kurt Angle when he comes back into WWE. You know, obviously rumors are going to be circulating. Who does Daniel Bryan, uh, you know, who's Daniel Bryan going to go up against at WrestleMania? Because Kurt Angle has already named the one guy he wants to go up against, and that is Daniel Bryan. Can you imagine those two going at it? That would be... An absolute epic last match for Kurt Angle. Can you fucking picture that right now? I got goosebumps talking about that. You know Angle could still go. You know Angle wants to go out on top. You know Angle wants to go out at WrestleMania. There's no better guy to do it with than Daniel Bryan. Bo Dallas news. If you guys are uh, interested in Bo Dallas' debut, he will be debuting May 23rd on SmackDown from London. Not this week's show as originally planned. Word is that this was a creative decision so they could give Bo's return the proper spotlight. And finally, guys, for those wondering, the reason why Alicia Fox is portraying a crazy woman on TV is because someone saw the surveillance video posted by TMZ of Solange Knowles attacking JC, uh, JC, JZ in an elevator in New York City while her sister Beyonce stood by. Someone in the company pitched the idea to use in a storyline, so they went with it. No one knows why Solange had the meltdown, so they are playing it up. The same way on WWE TV. Alicia had a meltdown on Raw and WWE main event, but it wasn't really explained why she had the meltdown. She needs something to do. There you go. That's where they're doing it. But that's uh, the news and rumors for part two, guys. In part three, I got big news on WWE 2K15, and I got big news on Triple H and Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is actually making Triple H look bad in front of the WWE talent. I will tell you why in the situation surrounding that. Also news on WW2K15 release date and uh, certain game modes that they're thinking about putting in the game. So join me for part three, guys. I'm out. If you missed part one, links down below. Let me know what you think of part two's top stories. Let me know what you think about uh, Daniel Bryan possibly being stripped um, and all the scenarios I brought to your attention re uh, regarding the WW Championship. That's that, guys. I'll see you in part three. Take care, and I'll see you then.